Hello my DIY friends, Jeff here again and today we have a very useful video for you that solves a very common problem that a lot of people have with the traps whether it be under your kitchen sink or under your bathroom sink. But I'm willing to bet you're here today because you have a leak right here at this spot here on your P-trap under the kitchen sink. And you're probably wondering why is it leaking here at this connection point, right at the P-trap connection point? Why is it leaking right where the, the the nut is where the threads are and it connects together there. So today we're going to show you how to fix that and let's get right into it. Okay, so today we're going to replace the kitchen sink trap with this one here. This is a transparent one. This is kind of cool. You'll like this because when we're done installing it and we set it up and get it filled with water, you'll be able to see exactly how the water functions inside the P-trap. And so remember this is a kitchen sink P-trap so we're using one and a half inches. Had this been a bathroom vanity, the bathroom sink P-trap uses one and a quarter. So make sure you get the right one. So usually when you go to Home Depot, the green ones are for the bathroom. The purple bags are for the kitchen. Right? So let's get started on that. All right, so here you can see we have two P-traps going here. One is coming from the garbage disposal and going to the uh, street drain. And then the other one is coming from the sink itself. It's a P-trap. And it may not look exactly like a P, but it really is. Just It's just twisted around backwards there because that's due to the architecture of the plumbing in here. That's how it had to be routed. But we're going to show you why the P-trap leaks right here at this nut. And so to understand that, let's take a look at the architecture of the P-trap. This is what the P-trap looks like when you have it out and you know, this is how it's supposed to connect all together. So the water comes down the drain, enters into the P-trap dip, and it comes out of the P-trap outlet and into the P-trap arm where it connects in and goes to the waistline going into the wall. Now the waistline side has a gasket, usually rubber, so that when this nut is screwed into the threadings on the waistline, it forms a watertight seal. So how do we get the watertight seal here and why is there water leaking? Remember the purpose of a trap. Why is this called a trap? Because it traps the water here so that the sewer gases can't come up in your house. A P-trap is required by code. So every house should have one on, on every um, fixture, basically. So a lot of people erroneously think that the water just sits right here, but it doesn't. The water sits from this point right here. See this bottom edge of the, the trap arm here, at the bottom of the crown here? This is where the water level sits inside there. So it comes up to about here. And it goes all the way down and around to about the same level on this side here. So this entire trap, all the way including the nut and past the nut, is full of water. That's the, pe the part people don't understand. This nut is immersed in water on the inside. You know, the whole area inside the pipe there has a column of water in it. And in fact, in the plumbing rules here, which I have a copy of here, this is the uh, Uniform Plumbing Code here, and in this plumbing code here under section 1005.0 under the trap seal, it says that it must be not less than two inches and not more than four inches. So the trap seal is this column of water that's going to be right in here, all right? So it has to be two inches minimum from here to here. So when you buy these kits, they're already preformed so that you're satisfying that, that rule. So let's unscrew this and let's see why these always want to leak right there. This is the thing that I don't like about traps. Um, because when you look, why does this end get a nice rubber gasket? But the end here, where the, the, where the uh, trap pipe here, the trap arm, connects onto the outlet of the trap, why is it just an angled piece of plastic? You see that? That's all you get there is an angled piece of plastic that matches a sort of uh, concave shape there, you know, a little volcano bowl type effect where it just lands in it. But you see that? You see how you can be crooked there? These are supposed to be perfectly level when you screw this in together. And if it's not, you're going to have leaks. So that's one reason it leaks. Another reason it can leak is because I've seen it where these nuts are cracked as well. And they crack because people get these handyman Joes that show up and tighten it with their um, their channel locks, and they tighten it way too tight, and it and it cracks. So these are really meant to be hand tightened. I go about as far as I can go, 
And then you can use a, a, a wrench to just go a quarter of a turn. You don't need to go any more than that. Because look, you can see it's nice and tight right now. And anytime you can get this part tightened together to this part, make sure it's nice and perfectly level and doing it with it, its job perfectly before you hook up the P-trap, that's even better. Sometimes you can't and you just have to do them all loose. You know, connect, make sure everything's loose when you connect them all up, all the pieces together. But I try to tighten this one first. I make sure that this guy is satisfied first before these other two are because these other two are going to have gaskets. They're not as finicky as this particular connection nut is right here on the P-trap. So that's why to me this one's the most important one to get right, right off the bat. Tighten him down first and once he's happy, the other guys will conform because they have a lot more room to play with with these rubber gaskets. Okay, so let's get that done. Okay, so I want to show you this very useful tool that I like to use here. This is called a three-way plumber's wrench. So this can handle three different functions. It handles large hex nuts right here. And this big hook part here will handle uh, the, the big um, nut around your uh, sink drain in the kitchen under the sink. But this is the one I'm looking at right now. This is uh, pretty cool here. So what we do here with this one is this fits around the wing nut. So it's acting like a wing nut wrench here. So you see how that little groove right there fits around the, the winglet? And the other one just fits against one of the little knobs there. So that allows you to just loosen it like that, see, very easily. Because sometimes people will put them on real tight and these dig into your fingers. And if, you have, if you're older, maybe you're disabled, you have weak hands, you're not gonna be able to undo it. Uh, so this is good to have. And it's also great for when you go to tighten it because then you flip it the other way and then you tighten the nut like that. So after you've hand tightened it, you can use this to go another quarter or a half a turn to make sure that you're in there nice and solid. Okay. Boom. All right, so here we have the trap arm. So remember, we're putting in the transparent P-trap now. And so I've already got it sized to fit in here, right? So what you do first is you gotta put on the first nut and you gotta put it in with the threads facing down like that because it's going to come down and tighten down to the bottom of the, the trap here. So it's going to meet up to this piece. So that goes on first. And then remember this is going to mate onto the wall over there. So this nut now comes on second. And this is the part everybody forgets and this is what causes a leak over here at this part. They forget to put this gasket on. And they sometimes they get the direction wrong. You have to put it on so that it, the flat part of the washer is facing the nut, see, like that. And the reason why it's angled is because the piece that it connects into in here is angled, and this is what fits the watertight seal, it makes it nice and tight in there. So that when you screw this onto that pipe, it snugs everything together and it pinches against this washer here. So that's why that needs to be there. And this doesn't need a washer because they sort of have it uh, their gasket is, is this right here. It's the shape of the plastic. All right, so now we're going to join these two together. Now, you can see how it's important to have this thing perfect, like absolutely perfect. Because if this is off, like let's say the alignment's off, see how there's, the water can slip out right there. Because this joint is going to be underwater, as I mentioned before. So we have to make sure that that's really perfect there. We're gonna just loosely tighten them together for now. And once we get the whole thing together, we'll do a final tighten on it. Okay, so you see how the gasket comes in here and it seals around the thread there like that? And so we're not going to, we're just going to loosely start it. We're not going to tighten it yet because this is the one that's the most important one to me. I want to make sure that he is absolutely level. I'm going to unscrew him again and take a look at him. See, because he's not really lined up that good. So I'm going to pull him back out a little bit. You want to make sure these two are just absolutely perfectly level, like that, see? Then you can run your nut back down. Now I'm going to tighten this one. This is the most important joint, because it's the one that is the most finicky, and it has to be fully lined. 
So I tighten as much as I can with my hand. I tighten this one first and he's satisfied. Now we're going to tighten these other two. So these two have the, the rubber gaskets on them, those washers. And so they'll tighten up pretty good on their own, um, pretty easily. Just do about a quarter of a turn, like that. And a little bit of lettuce in that way, or if we have to come in from the bottom. Okay, so those are in nice and tight. So now we're ready to turn on the water. Okay, what I usually do is I set the water on hot because I want to run hot water through here for a few minutes to get everything expanding and, and I get them all used to each other, I'll get all the parts to say hello and everything, get acquainted. So let's do that and we'll watch for any leaks. Okay, so there I've let the water run for a few minutes now, it's coming through, it's all hot water at this point. And as we look up top here, there's no moisture around the drain, which is a good sign. That means we sealed it up nice. And we've solved the link up here at the kitchen drain. But our testing is not done yet. All right, so now that we know that at least with the water running in it, we're doing okay. What I want to do now is fill up the sink with water and let the whole thing go. That's another good test to do here for your leaks. So I put the plug in there, and we'll let the kitchen sink basin fill up with hot water here. And then we'll release the water and let it flush down the drain and down into the P-trap. And we'll see if that rush of water makes it through okay. Okay, so our basin is filled with hot water. And now we're going to let it all go. Just watch it rush through there, through the P-trap. go so it's all done so now after a little bit you'll see some of the water settle back here see how it's the little air bubble up top there is growing it's setting the the level of the weir so the weir is what we call this top level of the water here now in this particular case we would actually like to see it a little lower and the reason why it's not, uh, this should be up higher, but there's really not much you can do right here because of the way the plumbing was uh, done here. The pipe comes out horizontal from the wall. You really should have a little bit of a decline down towards the wall. Not a lot, only a quarter of an inch um, per 12 inches. So, but you can at least see it. You can at least get the air behind water. So you can see now here, from looking at this, you can see why you sometimes will have water leaking out of this nut because this whole column right here is underwater. This column right here from the weir to the upper dipper, the upper dip right here. So from this column right here is what protects you from all the methane gases coming in from the sewer system, from the drain. The gases are right up to this point right here and then the water stops it. This column of water is what stops it. So sometimes when you winterize your house and you leave and it, this evaporates and that's why you can smell sewer gases when you come back if that evaporates and you just fill it right back up with water again by running the water for a few seconds here. But so you can see the water level is like probably right around in here up to here, right? So anyway, there's no drips, but we're not quite out of the woods yet and I'll show you why. So I always like to put a little piece of paper towel under it, or you can also use newspaper, and it will let you know if there is a leak, if, even if a drop of water comes down. Because just because we ran this test and flooded it and everything and it works, doesn't mean we're out of the woods yet, because now the long-term test comes over a few hours, or even overnight, is any water going to leach out of this connection right here? Because this connection on your P-trap outlet, where it meets the P-trap arm, is underwater so we want to make sure that that's not leaching out overnight so that's the part you have to monitor now to make sure you're okay right 
So we'll let that go and let it run overnight and we'll come back and check on it tomorrow. Okay, so now that this leak is done, I think our mission here is complete. We got the P trap in place here. So if you like this video, we would appreciate if you give us a thumbs up down below. Let us know that you like us. And then don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can come back and watch over 200 videos that we have uploaded covering all sorts of failures and repairs around your house and all sorts of remodeling ideas for you. And then when you hit the subscribe button, make sure you hit that little gray bell icon so that you'll be alerted whenever we upload a video and you will never miss a single video. So that's it for this week, folks. We'll see you on the next video. Bye.